if I were Julius Abure, I would not contest to be the chairman of Labour Party. Hello guys, welcome once again to Think Tank TV. For those of you who do not understand the truth surrounding the crisis that is rocking the Labour Party, because obviously different media houses has put up different information by virtue of the information they are privy to. Yes, it is very critical that you get to understand the facts surrounding this crisis so that you can know how your trajectory can be in the next general election. Joining me to give you clarifications on the crisis surrounding the Labour Party is Kenneth Okonkwo, who is a lawyer, a politician and an actor, obviously preview to most of the information you really want to know about the crisis. Kenneth Okonkwo has gone ahead to dissect the political intrigues which is surrounded by interest of some of the Labour Party leaders. Do all to sit back and get the full details for yourself. But don't go anywhere, I'll be coming back to give you my thoughts about it. Take a look. Let me take you to the politics of your party. Your party is in disarray. The Labour Party. You see what is happening? Yes, you are sir. one of those calling for the head of Julius Abure. Why? <laughs> I don't know whether you are right. <laughs> But I know that I said I disagree with the clandestine nature of the way they want to handle the issue of national convention. I find it unconstitutional and I find it unconventional. And the way they are going about it, I find it very abusive and uncharacteristic of Labour Party. Let me tell you one provision of the constitution of Labour Party I admire so much. And the aims and objectives of the party. Article 8C of the Constitution. He said the aim of this party should be to create a new Nigerian personality who is patriotic, altruistic, transparent, committed to due process and rule of law in governance, in industry and in other aspects of our national life. So anything you're doing in Labour Party and it's not transparent and you're not being selfless and you're not being patriotic and you're not committed to the rule of law and due process. Sorry, that falls short of the constitutional requirement of Labour Party. Do you know I saw the notice of the convention in the social media like any other person? And I was the one who was calling the executives to confirm before I even tell people that it is true that they, are, they fixed the national convention. I saw it in the social media. Is political party an occultic clandestine society? Are you a card card member of the Labour Party? <laughs> yes, I am. You joined from your state in Enugu State. Very well. And your work. <laughs> After they came to Abuja to register me, even my ward chairman from Osuka sent a representative. I went to the national headquarters and then went back to my word and completed the registration. So I am a member of Labour Party. What, I mean, if there are those who think that the Labour Party chairman assumed office illegally, you agree with that argument? Assumed office illegally, I will disagree. Because I know that when the other chairman died, the National Executive Council met and chose him to become the chairman, which is constitutional. By virtue of Article 13, to be XVI, the National Executive Council can fill any gap in between national convention. They can also discipline anybody. You know what? The seat of the administration of Labour Party is not in the National Working Committee. It's in the National Executive Council. The National Working Committee, for instance, has no power whatsoever in anything that has to do with National Convention. If you check the Constitution, Article 13.3b, you will not find the phrase National Convention mentioned in one of the functions of the National Working Committee. The power is bestowed 100% on the National Executive Council. So what they are doing right now is illegal and unconstitutional. And when they talk about NLC, I feel very, very sad. 
is either they are doing it mischievously or they are doing it ignorantly the time you say nlc first of all what they said about joajero that joajero is doing what he's doing because he's interested in the executive positions in national working committee and that you are one of those joajero is planning to use to voice as a leadership on the party <laughs> <laughs> You know I'm laughing. I do not have any communication with any member of the national the Nigerian Labour Congress. None. But I've never sat down one on one to discuss with Joe Ajay about the Labour Party. The few occasions I met him we exchanged pleasantries. Very few occasions and everybody left. But let me tell you the people that are doing the wrong thing. I hate when people appropriate and reprobate. When the renegade faction went to the secretary and threw out Aburi and his officers, it was still the same Joe Ajero that mobilized the Nigerian Labour Congress under the correct position that Nigerian Labour Congress is a factor in Labour Party and that you people that came in, came in from the back door. It was still this Joe Ajero that mobilized people and went to the National Assembly and threw those people out and restored Julius Aburi and his members. And now they are turning back when the same Joe Ajero and NLC used the same method because they are saying what you're doing is illegal and unconstitutional to preserve and protect the integrity and sanctity of the secretary like they did before. Now you're in the receiving end. And I'm saying all the things you don't know. Let me tell you, NLC is part and parcel of the National Executive Council and even the National Working Committee. Statutorily. Sure, not as an organization, but the Constitution gave them power to elect one of the National Deputy Chairman. Who must be from NLC, one from TUC. As members, do you know that the presidents and secretaries of labor centers are members of the National Executive Council? Statutorily, I am talking about Article 13 of the Labor Party Constitution. It is here. A National Working Committee. That's why we have three deputy national chairmen in the Labor Party. One of them must be from NLC. The other from TUC. One must be a woman. Women leaders of labor centers are members of the National Executive Council. They are accusing Joe Ajero of, yes. of uh, bearing a presidential ambition, and that's why he's doing all of this to the Labour Party. First of all, I find it laughable. And you know why? Is it because of what is happening that they are bringing the blackmail? You know when he said they want to pencil me down? <laughs> yeah, I think I was watching your show was it yesterday. <laughs> and when I heard my name, I, I was looking around to know that there is another Kenneth Ogongo. <laughs> I think the guy just likes dropping my name. Maybe my name gives him vitamin kwe kwe. And he just can't uh, stop it if he believes that he derives some essential nutrients from mentioning it. So he just can't stop it. And me being a lawyer that allows people to have their freedom, you know. But you know what? I do not succumb to the blackmail of professional troublemakers. What do you expect from them? They feed from the crisis. So they will always blackmail. When Jajero was defending them, you saw Abude standing by the side of Jajero. Jajero was the king, this, this and that. Now I saw what that person, he just mentioned his name. I saw what he said. He's now talking about making, as if he's now rapporting the Abude faction. You know why? Because the court of appeal just nullified them. And please, when you call them again and use the word faction, you are you are rendering yourself liable to be sued. Because the court of appeal has thrown away their case. That's why you did not hear him mention again in Tarim order. You didn't hear him saying Abure forged or did not forge. Now he's saying there are one party. These people do not have principles. They feed on crisis. So you think that 
Julius Aburi's time as yes. national chairman of the party is over and he should go. Now, is that what you think? Now, constitutionally, if he believes that he has the right to contest under a free and fair convention, you know, I heard them saying that they want to go to a national convention first rather than starting from the world. Maybe they forgot that in the constitution of the Labour Party, that delegates from the state congress are part of the national convention. Maybe they forgot. And again, most of these people from the world level are appointed. How can appointed people come to elect people in the national convention? You can't give what you don't have. There has to be, because Labour Party is now growing. So you have to build the structure from the world level. You do your world level congress, you do your state congress, then if he organizes free and fair convention, if he presents himself, which he has the constitutional right to do, if he wins, because what I am interested in is due process and rule of law. But you think, in yes. your mind, in that my opinion, Julius Abure Ab Ab should go? If I were Julius Abure, I would not contest to be the chairman of Labour Party. Why? I mean, the renegade group has alleged that you forged things. The former acting national chairman, a woman, has alleged that you forged things. Some candidates that offered themselves for election on the Labour Party have alleged you forged something. Your national treasurer has alleged you forged something. The NLC, who is a prominent member, has alleged you forged something. Let me tell you in politics, you win by perception. It is when you go to court that you begin to talk about facts and evidence and law. But in politics, the perception is not just right for you. If I were in his position, I would not contest. I am really surprised that he was even contemplating after all these things to contest. What perception are we going to have the Labour Party when we say we want people who not only that they are not corrupt, but they are incorruptible. Obi has been a governor for eight years, has been the chairman of banks, held certain positions of trust. How many people have accused him of forging anything? Why has Peter Obi not spoken up about this matter? When you see Peter Obi, you ask him. You are his friend. <laughs> yes, and he's a spokesperson. You don't think that if he speaks on this matter, yeah. this might actually heal what has become sort of a disgrace and a bad reputation for the Labour Party. Everybody has his own method and methodology of dealing with things. I am an entertainer, I'm an actor. He's a businessman. We may share the same principles and objectives, but we may not share the same temperament. Allow him to use his own method, just as you should allow me to use mine. So when you see him, you ask him. I will definitely. You've seen it for yourself. Now, the truth of the matter is that, like Abraham Lincoln would say, you can never know a man until you give him power and money. Peter Odele, who is a former governor of River State, has also said that countless times when he was the governor of River State. People can pretend to have integrity, people can pretend to be straightforward, people can pretend to be anything. People can come on national television and say different things, but the truth is that until you unveil them to money and power, you may never know what their true character is. Yes, a lot of people have criticized Julius Aburi, who has obviously done well for the Labour Party in the past, by virtue of how far he has taken the party up until now. But the truth of the matter is that you must know when to step aside, regardless of how good of a dancer you are. This is exactly what people are talking about in politicians, the APC, the PDP and all of them. But when it is time for you to step aside for someone else to take control, you must step aside for the next person to take control, especially when we have the likes of these fraudulent charges and all these things against you. And like Kenneth Dokonko said, the truth is that when people have a perception about you, that is what will decide whether you're going to be winning an election or not. But when you go to the courts, what is going to be deciding whether you're going to win the court is going to be your facts and evidences. Obviously, 
a lot of um, obedience around the world have criticized Kenneth Okonkwo. The Nigerian Labour Congress, who is one of the major supporters of the Labour Party, has also criticized Julius Aburi for his actions that is obviously not in tandem with the rules and regulations of the Labour Party. And I think it is best for him to step aside rather than rubbishing yourself, rubbishing your name after all the good things you have done in the past. Because obviously, when the Labour Party says they are the third force, they want to take over power, they must be exemplary. They don't have. The, you, you can't come out and say uh, because you you want you you in, you obviously want to be the national president. You've been moving past. He, he has moved this uh, a national convention from Abia State. Now he has moved to Anambra State. It was somewhere before. All it need be for you to conduct a sham convention that will be to your own favor so that you can be in control to continue your shenanigans. It's a very, very big shame to Aburi. And I think that people must come out to say the truth to him. And everyone who has anything to do with Labour Party must come out and speak truth to power. A lot of people have spoken about how that Peter Obi has not said anything about this, uh, the actions of Julius Aburi. And Kenneth Okonkwo said it like you heard, that the truth of the matter is that different people approach matters differently. He must first of all analyze the issues because obviously regardless of what people think about what julius abri has done julius abri was a strong backbone of peter b especially during the elections and after the elections please i'd like you to go to the comment section and drop your thought let's get to know what you think about the actions of julius abri and we shall continually be here to save you Please also do what to intentionally hit the like button. The reason why I want you to do that is so that you can get to recommend this video for more people to get to see what exactly is happening in Labour Party and make their recommendations. Many thanks indeed to all our viewers and returning subscribers. We really do not take it lightly. My name again is Moses and this is Think Tank TV. See you on our next video. Bye for now.